because I, I feel like I need to pray. Amen. <laughs> Always. Praise the Lord. Father, we just love you and thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Father, I just thank you for your anointing. Father, I thank you you've anointed your words. And Father, I thank you that you anoint the words that I speak tonight. And Father, I just praise you and thank you that those words, as you said, do not return void, but they accomplish that which they have been sent out to do. And Father, I thank you that the people's lives tonight will not only be touched, but changed. And I thank you for that. And Father, I thank you for the calling on my life. I thank you, Father, for walking in all that you have for me. And Lord, every step of the way, you will get all the glory. And I just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know why I say that? Because I know <laughs> everything I do when I stand up here, it is God. Uh, it is not me. I know that <laughs> because I couldn't stand up here without him. I would be lost, <laughs> as the song goes. I would be lost without him. And um, so, because, you know, I'm just not in the natural a speaker. But I thank God for his anointing. Hallelujah. And his callings. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I wanted, I know we're going to have um, healing, um, praying for the sick and everything at the end, and we're going to receive communion and everything. But I just feel like God wanted um, me, you know, Pastor said this morning, I had asked him something last night. I was already tossing over some things. And I just feel like we're supposed to talk some on increase tonight. And when I say, um, suppose I say the God of increase, what do most of you think about? Tell me, somebody, feedback. Finances. finances. Most people do think about finances when we say increase. But I want you to look tonight with me, and I want you to look at increase from several different aspects, not just financial increase. Yes, he does want us to increase financially, but there's so many other areas in life he wants us to increase. So, because um, God is interested in developing us as a person, not just interested in, um, you know, blessing us and giving us a house and a Cadillac and, you know, a bunch of land and everything. He's interested in us developing into who we should be and who we are called to be for this time that we're living in. Each of us have callings. Each of us have things that we are supposed to do in the kingdom. You know, I, this, you know how you get messages on Facebook and everything, and I got this message today, and I was taken back to um, many years ago when I was newly born again, so excited about the Lord and all he had done in my life. And I shared with a high school friend of mine, um, we were out of high school at this point, and I shared with her the gospel. And it made her turn her life around. She gave her life to the Lord. And you didn't see at that time, you know, where that would go, where that would take her. We knew we were born again and excited about the Lord. But she reminded me on Facebook today that I was instrumental in her, you know, coming to the Lord and everything. And it, it just blessed me that she had said this, but the point is that we are being used by God in, our, in different areas of life, and we need to be faithful, and we need to increase in those areas where we touch more lives. But anyway, she went on to, um, she got born again. She went on to just be excited about the Lord, and to the point she decided to dedicate her life to missions, and now she serves as a missionary. I'm oh, just so excited. Excited. She serves as a missionary in Bulgaria and touches the, travels the whole nation of Bulgaria and ministers the gospel. Now, little did I know, little Melanie in high school, um, you know, I call her little because I always felt so big because Melanie was about this tall. 
and Melanie still is about this tall. She'll probably watch this video, but Melanie is still about this tall, and she always made me feel so tall, you know, <laughs> all five, one and a half inch of me. But anyway, I'm just so excited that we can be used by God. What, what we may think are just small things, they touch people's lives, and he wants us to increase in our lives so that we, we continue to touch people's lives, okay? He's concerned about us. He wants us to walk in all that he has. And that scripture pastor was reading this morning, uh, let's see, I've got it in my notes somewhere because it was in my notes and I was asking him about it last night. <laughs> anyway, Hebrews 6.14 says, assuredly, I will bless you and bless you, and I will increase you and increase you. God wants to increase us. He wants to increase us not just by giving us a bunch of taters on a hill somewhere, you know. He wants to increase us in many areas, and we're going to talk about a lot of the areas that he wants us to walk in increase. But first of all, I want you to go with me to a scripture. I don't know if we can pull up the message translation back there. Can we do that? Is that a yes? Um, 2 Corinthians 6, verses 11 through 13. I want us to look at that in the message translation. And it says, 6 verses 11 through 13, I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter this wide open spacious life. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small but you're living them in a small way. Open up your lives. Live openly and expansively. Expand your life. Open it up. That's what he's saying here in 2 Corinthians. We want to live big. And when we say live big, I'm not talking about having the nicest, the best, you know, watch, jewelry, um, whatever, and clothing and stuff. I'm not talking about that when I say live big. I mean, you may have some of those things, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about living from the inside out, where we're letting God come out and through us to reach other people. Amen? So... Something had happened in the hearts of the Corinthians at this place in um, Corinthians that I just read, and it had caused them to begin to live restricted lives, lives that weren't in God's fullness, that weren't in the increase that he had promised to Abraham. They had shut down some things. Um, you know, things happen in people's lives that they do allow situations, um, circumstances, um, uh, loss of loved ones, whatever, things like that. And they, they, if, we, if we don't stay tuned in to God and his word and keeping it with, uh, 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 thank you, Lord, for these words, keeping it on our lips and keeping it before our eyes and keeping it in our heart, it will cause us to begin to draw back. And we don't want to draw back. We always want to go forward in God. We always want to increase in God. We always want to live in his fullness, okay? We want to be increasing, daily increasing, growing, walking in all he has for us. So anyway, they had begin, begun to restrict and constrict their relationship with God to the point that they weren't doing this. And, um, you know, we've all faced circumstances in life. We've faced hurts in life, whatever situations. We all face them because we're all human and we all live on this earth. But we can overcome and we can, with the word of God in our mouth and on our, in our heart and um, in our mind, we can overcome and we can walk in his fullness for our lives. Let me um, 
read a few scriptures for you. We don't have to um, look them all up because for time, we're because we're, I don't want to keep you forever tonight, you know. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's look at Genesis 12, 2. Um, if you want to turn there, if not, that's fine. God told Abraham this. He said, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. God wants us to be a blessing. You know, um, definitely it does take some money to be able to give somebody something that you have, but not always. You can give somebody something you have that you already have that's special to you. And, you know, it didn't take money to get it because you already had it but it's special and you give. I've had people over the years who in my thinking had nearly nothing in this natural world, but their heart has always been to give and so they give. Even if it's a candy bar, a small item, their heart is to give and so they continue to give and, and they continue to be a blessing. We can be a blessing as long as we are looking to God as our source and looking to him for the increase in our lives, we can be a blessing because we're keeping a right attitude. So here, he later told Abraham, he said, I will multiply you exceedingly not just multiply. You know, recently I taught the whole month of August to the children about um, seed, sowing and reaping. And I brought in a package, a Ziploc bag full of seeds, full of little tiny black seeds. And these little tiny black seeds were collard seeds. And they all came from one plant that had, we allowed to seed up, as you call it. We allowed it to flower, and then after it flowered, the flowers grew little, almost looked like green beans. And in each of those green beans was a line of little seeds that started out green, and as they began to dry, they turned red, and then they turned black. But um, the reason I was sharing that is because it says here that he will multiply you exceedingly, you know? That plant produced so many seeds, and to grow that plant, it only took one of those little black seeds, a little bit bigger than a mustard seed, tiny seed. I mean, you drop them and they bounce on the floor like marbles, but little bitty things, you know? But that whole bag was full. Just think about it, that principle, that law that God put into place many, many years ago that the, as long, let's see, how does it go? But anyway, seed time and harvest, you know? You're going to plant a seed and it's going to produce and you're going to harvest. And in harvesting, you know, we, we were able to eat all those leaves from the collards and still got the seeds to come out the top and were able to harvest all those seeds. We could plant enough collards from that one bag to probably take care of North Carolina and South Carolina, you know? And so we're talking exceedingly. That's our Father God. He's an exceedingly increasing God. He increases our lives exceedingly. Let's look in Luke 2.52. It says, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. And speaking prophetically of Jesus, Isaiah said, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Hallelujah. I believe there's no end in our increase because God said to Abraham, and we are the seed of Abraham, he would increase him and increase him. Amen. Um, Psalm 115, 14 states, May the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. Amen. And of course, we read earlier Hebrews 6, 14. God wants increase in our lives. So I'm going to go over a few areas that we can just look at some scriptures and name. First of all, Proverbs 24, 5. He wants us to increase in strength. Amen. Increase in strength. 
You know, I was looking today, um, I was looking about healing and everything, and, and I was looking, and I, I just feel like God wants me to minister to some one person or more than one person who's been feeling a lack of strength in their life. And, um, and so we're going to, when we pray for um, heal, healing for people, we're going to be praying about that as well. So if that happens to be you, if you're the one. But um, he wants us to increase in strength. Amen. We, we do not have to walk around weak and feeble. Amen. We can be strong. I think we just, uh, we can be strong in the Lord. Amen. Let's look. Proverbs 24, 5 says, um, a man of knowledge increases strength. And Isaiah 40, 29 says, to those who have no might, he increases strength. Amen. Amen. You know, he increases our strength. He wants us to walk in strength strength. Praise the Lord. Also, we are to increase in power. Power. Psalm 7510 says, the New Living Translation says this, it says, for God says, I will break the strength of the wicked, but I will increase the power of the godly. How many of you are godly out there tonight? Amen. He will increase your power. Amen. And then let's look at another scripture. Another area we are to increase in is in our resources and generosity. Proverbs 11:24 says, "The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller." <laughs> you know, we want to be generous. We want to increase in generosity. We want to um, just be generous, a giving heart. You know, I have one child. She would have given away everything she had if I hadn't stopped her. I feel bad that I stopped her, but, you know, she was giving everything away. She would give everything away. Just such a generous person, you know? Just give, give, give. Give, Mommy, I'm going to give so-and-so this. Uh, okay, honey. You know, and she just, <laughs> Mommy, I'm going to give so-and-so my birthright. I mean, she just want to give. You know? <laughs> but anyway, we are to be generous. We are to... Um, be giving and have uh, increase in our resources. Second Corinthians 9:10 says, "For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you." Amen. Amen. You know, this is a side journey, but I've found that many times um, people, when things aren't, you know, going great or whatever, they begin to say, they begin to talk, and they begin to talk against the word. And, um, and so they don't see that increase taking place in their lives. They, I like what uh, Mark Hankins says. He says that, um, if your faith isn't talking, your faith isn't working. I like that because we've got to speak our faith and we've got to speak what the Word says. We've got to speak to those mountains and we've got to say what the Word says. And the Word says that He will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Amen. He wants us to increase in that area where we can be a blessing. We can be a blessing, not that you're not already a blessing, but we can be more of a blessing to people's lives because we allow his increase to take place in our resources to the point that we then be, are just overflowing in resources that we can bless others with. Amen? Amen. Um, thank God microphones work right. Hallelujah. 
We are to increase in the knowledge of God. We are to continually be learning about him and about his ways. Because his ways are so much higher than our ways. We are to continually pursue him. I love that song we sang this morning. And um, I just went on this blank. You know how you, you, you just, I, I, I pulled out my phone to look up something. I thought, this doesn't look good. So I put it back down. I thought, they think I'm probably just checking my email. But no, I was trying to look up a word. I just went blank for a good definition of desperate. You know, we sang, I'm desperate for you. And, and so later on this afternoon, I went home and I looked it up. And desperate, let's see, how did, I, um, how did it go? It, it's um, basically to, to be um, pursuing after something. You can't live without it. You're just pursuing after it because you just can't live without him. And that's how we must be with God. We must be after him with all that we have within us. We must be pursuing him. And we must feel that way, that we can't live without him, and that we're lost without him. Amen? Without him, I mean, what, what we do without him is of no worth. We, we must realize that he is the reason that we live and breathe. He's the reason. Hallelujah. So we want to increase in the knowledge of God. Let's look at Col Colossians 1.10. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. So we increase in the knowledge of God how? How? By one way is by pursuing him through his word. The other way is pursuing him in prayer, spending time with him. What a wonderful day, a day that we begin talking to our Father God and pursuing him and spending time with him instead of being so busy. You know, um, I, I find myself when I, on my way to work is like a good time for me to be by myself and pray and pray about my day and pray about the people I'm going to influence and be a blessing in their life and everything and, and, and how, you know, the things I'm going to do that day and it's a great time. But whenever time you find the time to start your day off and to pursue him and to desire to get to know him more and increase in the knowledge of him is a good day. <laughs> Amen. It's a good day. It's a good day of increase. Another area we are to increase in is the love of God. Well, we could do a whole year's sermons on the love of God, you know? I mean, we could, couldn't we? Yeah, we are to increase in the love of God. 1 Thessalonians 3.12 says, And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you. It's so important that we walk in love and that we increase in the love of God. And the more we know him, the more we will increase. The more we spend time with him, the more we will increase in his love. It's so important that we keep our hearts right before him so that we can increase in the love of God and not have anything be between us and the Lord, not have any situation. You know, I know things happen um, in, in workplaces where situations happen or things happen in families, you know? Sisters and brothers, they grow up and get married and go off in different directions and then maybe get together for a little while for holidays and have fights and everything and so then they decide, you know, I'm not gonna have anything to do with them. No, don't walk down that path, but continually increase in the love of God and say, Lord, I want to increase in your love. I don't wanna take steps back 
but I want to go forward. I want to um, increase in that area in my life. And Lord, I want, to sh want you to show me how I can increase. You know, obviously forgiving is a big step in increasing in the love of God, walking in forgiveness. But increasing in the knowledge of the love of God, that comes too from reading his word and seeing examples of people who walk in love. And then look at people in your life and how they walk in love. You know, and how someone can do them wrong and then they just turn right around and love them and do for them and you're, you scratch your head and go, how could they be doing that? They've got a greater understanding of love than we do if we're scratching our head, you know, and wondering how could they be doing it. And so our goal should be to always increase in that area, always increase in the love of God. And then another area, and obviously these are not all the areas because he wants us to increase exceedingly, but this is just a few of them. And a last one I'm going to point at here, we are to increase corporately as the body of Christ. Ephesians 4.16 says, speaks of um, the effectual working of the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. He wants us to increase corporately as the body of Christ. He wants this church to increase, increase in all areas, increase in our love for each other, increase in our family atmosphere, increase in our reaching out to people that walk through the doors and not just be, you know, in our little cliques as it were, but we, when we see someone walk through the door, we run up to them, a new person, and we run up to them and greet them and love on them. And a lot of times that love is something they came here looking for. They're looking for love. They're looking for people to love on them. And we can increase as a body here to the point that when we are aware when someone walks in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then realizing that all increase that comes it is from God let's look at a scripture 1 Corinthians 3 6 and 7 what does it say it says I planted Apollos watered but God gave the increase hallelujah God gave the increase so then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters. You know, we as people like to, I hate to move for this microphone, but we like to pat ourselves on the back, you know. I, I did blah, 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 you know. I this and I that. And, but here we see it's God who gives the increase nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase, okay? It is God. Hallelujah. We pursue him, and we speak his word over our lives, and he increases, and, he, and we walk in that covenant that we have with him. So many people walk around, and they don't even get into the tip of the iceberg of the covenant rights that we have. They just live on barely get along street when we have so much provided for us, so much that he has, it's exceedingly above all we can ask or even think. That's our Father God because he's the God of increase. He's a great and mighty God. And he loves us and he cares about us. And he cares about even the littlest, smallest thing. He cares about it. Amen. He wants you to walk in his fullness. He wants you to walk in that increase 
that he promised to Abraham. It is our promise as well. Amen? It is ours because we are the seed of Abraham. And we can walk in that as well. Amen. It's important that we acknowledge and trust God as our God of increase. We realize he is the one and that we trust him to increase us. Amen. So many times, because this didn't work out or that didn't work out, as I said in the beginning, circumstances or whatever, we begin to limit God. We don't want to limit God in our lives. We want to take all the limits off. We want to go full steam ahead for him and his kingdom and just walk in greatness, walk in increase. He wants us to increase our capacity to be a blessing to people in this earth. That is how, you know, uh, Pastor was talking this morning about uh, Matt Beamer and, and how he, his 10-year his plan is to have all of those graduates, you know. He's, he has tapped into something. He has tapped into the increase that God is speaking about here. He knows he knows and he sees that God is a God of increase. And so he has decided, Matt Beamer has decided to walk in that increase. Amen? I believe we can. Faith and Victory Church can walk in that increase. We can decide and we can see that it can be something that we can walk in as well. Amen? Amen. And be a blessing everywhere we go. And realizing that everywhere we go, people are watching us. You know? People are watching us. How we behave ourselves, people are watching that. You know, I mean, I've, I've had so many times where people have come to me afterward and said something. And I thought, oh my goodness, I am so glad I was listening to God, you know. <laughs> I am so glad I was walking according to his word. You know, you have no idea who is wa watching. But we want to be a blessing. And the way we're going to be a blessing is we're going to tap in to walking in that increase that God has provided. Amen? Amen. He wants us to increase in our strength and in our power. Um, I know sometimes we have to make decisions that, uh, to make changes in our lives that maybe aren't easy changes, you know? And maybe we have to give up something our flesh really wants, you know, to begin to walk in that to begin to take steps towards walking in his fullness and his increase, then let's just make a commitment to do it. Amen? Amen, you know? We may, we may like that Coca-Cola every day, uh, three times a day, but we may find out that Coca-Cola three times a day is zapping our strength, making our bones ache, making us feel like we can hardly move, you know? Give it up. Give it up and let God move in your life. Let God be uh, the, the one you're pursuing more than that delicious, delicious, <laughs> dripping water on the sides of it, Coca-Cola, you know? <laughs> Glory to God. You know, you can think about those things and you can make your mouth start watering just envisioning it. But envision even more. Envision walking in his fullness to the point that you can walk around and be so full of him that you've got so much to give out to people you come in contact with, you know? So much to give out. You know, that's one of my goals at, um, at school, um, you know? I don't believe I... I took this job just to take this job, but I believe that there's a place for me to minister and to be a blessing to people's lives. And, and I meet people who are so down in life, and I get to share 
the goodness of God with them. And I get the love on them. I call them all sweetie. And if I don't call them sweetie, I call them honey. And they just get zapped with the love of God, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, that's my desire to be a blessing. And, you know, maybe I can't hand them all a thousand dollars, but I sure can pray for them. And I tell them, too. I tell them, honey, I'll pray for you. Of course, I can't pray for them right there in the middle of class, but I can pray for them, and I do. And, and that is one of, you know, when, when you build yourself up, you can give out, you know. And for you, your outlet may be that lady that you see every week at the grocery store. That may be the only place that you really get out, as it were, on a regular basis. And that lady at the grocery store, she talks to you about all of her problems or whatever. And you can begin to share God's goodness and his blessing because you've allowed him to increase you to the point you have something to give out. Amen? I know I'm going on and on here, starting to sound like my husband, right? Just going on and on and on about the increase. But we need to realize that increase is vital to his returning, his returning to this earth. That increase is something that we're going to have to walk in so that we can be a blessing to others, to share the gospel, to get the message out so that Jesus can come back. Amen? We want to be a blessing and share his love with people and walk in that increase. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, I just thank you. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy. Oh, Father, I thank you for your patience with us. I thank you, Father, for increasing us. And, Father, I thank you that the people have been stirred in their hearts and that a desire to pursue you more and to become desperate for you in their lives and realize that they are lost without you, Lord. Only you, you are that God of increase. And Father, I thank you that they realize that and not only realize it, but they decide to take a step up in their pursuit of you and your glory. And Father, I just thank you that as they pursue you, you do exactly what your word says. And you increase them and increase them. And you bless them and bless them. I thank you for that, Father. You're such a good Father God. You're awesome, amazing, exceedingly wonderful. We thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen.